Hi, I hope you all had a nice lunch and hopefully I'll try to keep you awake during the post-lunch doldrums. <laughs> so as actually I said, I'm going to speak about new trends in MEMS design and talk a little bit about modeling and simulation issues, hopefully motivating some things for math labs folks and also posing some research questions. So in terms of our agenda, I'll talk a little bit about the um, MEMS market landscape. I'll talk about some MEMS design trends, some modeling issues, and also some links to MathWorks tools that we've developed, and then we'll conclude. To talk a little bit about uh, sensor and MEMS-based systems, uh, I'd like to make the comment that pretty much all IoT and cyber physical systems have some sort of sensors in them and uh, sensor models are needed for design and operation. So I've shown a, a couple examples of MEMS, and some of the applications are, we have the, the MEMS-based toilet, or medic smart toilet, uh, to analyze urine. You can also make a soil analyzer, so a farmer can go out and automatically analyze their soil with a handheld instrument linked to their iPhone. Uh, but we also have more traditional applications shown on the bottom right. Uh, here is a Bosch airbag system. Bosch is the number one maker of MEMS in the world. Uh, your life depends on MEMS through uh, some of the uh, chips that are created uh, in the automobile industry. And finally, on the uh, left-hand side, we have a fun application. It's, called, it's from a company called Keg Data, where they're using a MEMS pressure sensor to check the CO2 level and the le level of your beer. So a little bit about the status of the MEMS industry itself. Our market is growing, M new applications all the, all the time, uh, more people joining in. Uh, but the problem that we have in the MEMS industry is our average selling price is going down. So if you look at the green graph here, you can see the average selling price of the individual chips is getting lower and lower, and there's a lot of competition. Apple is providing that for us to, to really squeeze the manufacturers to get the price per chip to go lower. So what's the solution? We need to move up the food chain. And so innovative startups and people who want to compete in MEMS need to add more intelligence to their MEMS solutions. And so as Yol Development says, we need more brains, less silicon in the MEMS uh, devices. And so the idea here is to capture a higher price with more functionality. And so in order to do that, we need to add data analytics to our products. And uh, the interesting thing is, where do we get the software? Where do we get the people? Because MEMS manufacturers are expert in MEMS, but now they need to add more software to their solutions, and they need to find ways of doing that. So a lot of MEMS companies, you know, a couple years ago, started buying um, uh, data analytics companies. And um, the, if efforts have been uh, put forth in uh, other industries as well to develop open source uh, toolboxes for data analytics. But I think MathWorks is pretty uh, perfectly positioned to supply uh, data analytics to so uh, startups who really, you know, it's not their area of expertise. And what I heard yesterday is, is MathWorks is trying to make this easy to do. And that's really important for a startup that needs to move up the food chain. And speaking about that, many of our applications require more than one sensor. Um, if we're doing an application like motion detection, we combine data from many sources, accelerometers, gyros, possibly a magnetometer or a pressure sensor, and so we have to have sensor fusion algorithms. But one of the points that I'd like to make is that in going into these algorithms, we need to make sure that the data from the sensors is correctly represented and that we know when the sensors are really giving uh, the correct output. One of the things we talked about today is that when magnetometers get next to batteries or other things or big uh, pieces of iron, they don't work. And other things, your accelerometer may not work in the area in which you've put it. So you've got to make sure that the data going into these algorithms is appropriate for that algorithm and that you really have done the correct data conditioning before the algorithm is applied. And also speaking about the types of uh, data that we get out of sensors, there's a recent talk in our industry by an, a gentleman named Scott Borg. He's with the US Cyber Consequences Unit. And what he's saying is that there used to be a lot of um, cyber attacks that were attacking computers, denial of service, all these other types of things. But now attackers are moving to a new paradigm where they're, they're attacking sources of data. Uh, industrial hacking and, and, and machines is becoming more prevalent. And so attackers are using faulty data from sensors to attack systems. Um, example um, as shown on the uh, right-hand side from a university where they're trying to fool accelerometers with the uh, $5 part that, that made the accelerometer give a faulty reading and they were able to access the system uh, that, that the accelerometers were attached to uh, through uh, a, an external stimuli. 
And so this is really important that we have to build design tools for adding and analyzing security risks at the sensor level, because there's a lot of work that's been going on at the network level, wireless se sensor networks, things like that. But if my attacker can come in through the sensor, then that's a big problem. Another important issue in our industry is that MEMS sensors are, are always combined in some way with electronics. So if we take a look at uh, a typical uh, uh, microphone here, microphone is then packaged with an ASIC to analyze and drive its signals. So everywhere we find a MEMS, we find some sort of circuit processing. So our, our um, MEMS sensor models have to be compatible with the kinds of tools that people use to design electronics. So good models often exist when the device is working, but what the, the circuit designers are complaining about, and I think a lot of systems people are complaining about, is the sensor models typically don't uh, model the part of the behavior that they're interested in. Like in, an, in a microphone, when you have overpressure and the microphone slams into something, what happens when the parts of the mem stick together or we have a big nonlinear signal? So I think it's really important uh, that we be able to develop good models that work over the regions of operations where our system level people are interested. And so for us, we've done a lot of work in making sure that our models are consistent with circuit simulators, with higher level simulators, even though we're trying to model the physics of the devices. And this is a hard problem because uh, linear models of uh, physical systems are pretty well solved, but these nonlinear cases, cases where the device is going out of spec, it's still a, a very important research issue. Another issue in our industry is packaging and integration. Integrations are um, increasing, and we're getting more and more chips in a smaller space. Uh, what I've shown here is a teardown of the iWatch, the Apple iWatch. And there are over 30 parts on one little mini, uh, I don't know what you call it, almost a substrate or a mini board, and the chips are densely packed together. And in the MEMS industry, we have the issue that where we place the MEMS device is very important, where the accelerometer is seated, or even the microphone has to be in a sp specific place to function properly. But yet, we've got to put all this into the small space of an iWatch. And we see as we look at teardowns of the I subsequent teardowns of the iWatch, that they've moved the chips around. And so there's a big need for understanding how the uh, sensor device interacts with its package and interacts with all of the devices that are next to it because they're really crammed together. And we've got multiple chips packaged in different ways, and we've got to understand those interactions. So we really need models that are um, able to capture the interactions between the devices, but yet also be able to handle a fair number of devices. And so we talked about that before. How do we uh, model, uh, decompose our system level models into to good uh, component models? But yet the, the key thing that we have to do in the MEMS area is capture also the interactions between those models. Because if you don't do that, you may be missing some important issues for system functionality. Another important issue in the MEMS area is design for manufacturing. Uh, what we've seen is that we, there's a giant chasm between sensor prototype uh, sensor prototypes and uh, manufacturable parts. And this really directly affects some of the university professors and community that have great ideas for new sensors, but then when they try to create a company and they try to go to volume production, that's where things go bad. Sometimes you know, venture capitalists will fund a great idea, but the company goes belly up because they spent too much money trying to get into volume manufacturing. So I call that the lab to fab problem. And so mature industries have well-established infrastructure for, for looking at design for manufacturing. But what about all the startups that would like to get there and get their products to market? And so we really need some design for manufacturing tools. And so that's one of the things that I think Math, MathWorks tools can play a role in. Uh, my company, SoftMems, made a link between uh, MATLAB and uh, our, our fabrication simulator so that we can simulate the different fabrication faults and tolerances and we drive that from math, the MathWorks tools. I'll talk a little bit just briefly because I only have a few minutes on some new MEMS and sensor trends. Uh, MEMS are finding new applications. Uh, one of the things that Peter was particularly interested in is uh, micro mirrors for LiDAR and heads-up displays. Uh, so I've shown 
uh, in the upper right here. Uh, again, we have a moving micro mirror that is then able to uh, I interact with a, uh, a signal coming in and then be able to, to perform the LIDAR function. And so the idea here that's really great is that these MEMS chips are really small, they're lightweight, uh, they're low power, and so we believe that this is going to be a new solution for a number of areas. Uh, another very interesting um, new application of MEMS is uh, PMUTs. These are ultrasonic transducers, and uh, the new area that uh, these parts are going to be coming out in is uh, gesture recognition, fingerprint re recognition, imaging, and things like that. So I've shown uh, what one of these guys looks like. It's a, um, it's a MEMS membrane that's deformable with the ultrasonic signal, and we can array them and uh, we can create uh, very low power devices this way. And so these are two applications that are just starting to enter the market. Um, MEMS is pretty well established in cars, in the iPhone, and in all kinds of other areas, but these are two, that, uh, two to watch, so to speak. Um, we also have a lot of new and interesting biochemical sensors. You'll see plugins to your phone that will enable you to analyze all kinds of things, breath, who, who knows, glucose, heaven knows what. Um, we also, in the men's industry, are exploring new materials, and this is a very interesting challenge for us because we have to characterize those materials, and we need things like material simulators because we don't know how these things, these new materials are going to behave, and we need to characterize them. Silicon, which is what most of our devices are made out, is a very well-characterized material, but some of these new things that we need to make our MEMS work are, are uh, still researchy. And that's also true for printed and flexible sensors, because I showed you that ASP curve for MEMS. If we're going to get to things like a trillion sensors and make things like wallpaper with sensors in them, we're going to probably have to do it with printable, printed and flexible sensors. And those are also uh, proving a challenge to model and to create systems using them, because there's really not a lot of tools out there that are addressing that area at the moment. Um, for being able to create manufacturable systems. And so on the whole, we need new models and new simulators to cover uh, all of these new applications in MEMS. And so that kind of brings me to my slide of, uh, motherhood slide, is uh, the, uh, one of the things that we talked about was that these MEMS are working in multiple domains. I showed you ultra sensor, uh, ultrasonic sensors, I showed you mechanical sensors in the, um, uh, in the car, um, we've got magnetic sensors, and they work on multiple time and length scales too. So these are really interesting uh, modeling challenges. And one of the in other important things that we have to do in MEMS is we have to collaborate between different experts to create models and systems. So we have different levels of abstraction that we have to cover, and we also have to deal with the fact that we need very specialized tools uh, for different aspects of design. So if we uh, are working on the physics of surfaces, we may have a special purpose surf uh, surface simulator or a material simulator or a packaging simulator or what have you. So we have all these different simulators and they may not all be able to put, be put directly into Math, MathWorks models. So we have to live in a world where we've got multiple simulators, multiple people doing different things with different levels of expertise, but we keep finding that MathWorks tools are part of that ecosystem and a very important part. And so part of the thing that my company does is we make bridges, a number of bridges from these different simulation um, tools to the MathWorks tools. And so I think um, something to think about for the MathWorks folks is to continue that. And I've listed some of the different types of simulators, just a, you know, a small fraction of what we found out there in the MEMS community. So let me conclude by saying that um, MEMS products are providing more intelligence as we move up the food chain uh, to incorporate more uh, algorithms and more software in our parts. Uh, as a result, um, I'm giving a very different talk to this year than I did last year because we're, we're doing different things. And uh, so new design issues are uh, coming up as our systems mature and uh, scale up. And as I mentioned, we have modeling at multiple scales. And we, very importantly, we have to analyze interactions between our devices and within our devices. And um, just to conclude, MathWorks tools are used at multiple points in MEMS and sensors design, so I think it's a very important, has a very important role to play in our industry. Thank you very much. <laughs>